the, the three guys, um, uh, one guys and one win, uh, two guys and one woman, uh, wins the Nobel Prize in physics 2020. And this is um, a new prize announced for the black holes. And uh, the first guy, uh, right here, this guy, and he is a British professor, but he retired now, and he used to work in the University of Oxford, and he's a mathematician, and he used the equation Einstein theory to calculate the black hole, and he discovered the black hole, and he said there sh should be some theory to explain black hole, and Einstein's general um, theory um, is a good theory to explain the behavior of the black hole, so he shared one half of the uh, price, and uh, the other two share the uh, the second half, and these two, um, Genzo and uh, and uh, Gates, and uh, discover the supermassive compact object at the center of the galaxy, and his um you they just uh, analyze the star and the uh, arbitrary of the star and in the center of the galaxy, and he just predict that there should be a very huge and massive object at the center of the galaxy. And so uh, he called this a supermassive compact object, but actually this is um, a black hole. So there is a black hole at the center of the galaxy. The, uh, the Nobel Prize just uh, uh, reward the three uh, scientists and uh, they got the Nobel Prize in the physics 2020. And so uh, let me spend a couple of minutes talking about the black hole. Um, black hole uh, from the, the movie. Uh, this is what you see. Um, and there's um, nothing in the center, but there is a very big ring um, surrounding this black hole. So if we go back to Newton's theory and uh, uh, think about um, what's the meaning of black hole, can we see the black hole? And let me open my notes. So here. We know um, if we stand on the Earth and we want to escape the Earth, we need a very huge speed to escape from Earth. So here, this is Earth, and the Earth has a radius, and on the Earth's surface, the uh, acceleration from the gravity is the maximum. So we know on the surface, the acceleration is 9.8 meter per second square, and we know the radius of the Earth is um, 6,000, and 700 uh, more around this number. So I use kil kilometer. And you can find that if we want to escape from the Earth, we need a very fast rocket. And the maximum or the minimum uh, velocity to escape from the Earth is equal to the square root gr. So that means if the radius of an object is a constant. If the acceleration increase, then the escape velocity increase. So the curve looks like this. And if the acceleration is large enough and makes the escape velocity uh, larger than the speed of light, we know the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meter per second. So if the escaping velocity escape is larger than the speed of light, then that will make the light cannot escape from the surface of this object. Then we call this as black hole. And we call it black because nothing can escape. Even the light, the speed of light is smaller than the escaping speed. And if that object can emit light, something like, um, like this, it emit light, and the light emit from the surface, then it goes back. 
like this. So this is light. And if you have a telescope and watch something here, and this black in the center. But uh, because the gravity is very large, there will be many stars moving around the black hole. So they have the arbitrary, uh, they, they have the orbit moving around the black hole. So we can use a microscope, uh, the, we use a telescope and to um, visualize uh, the objects surrounding the black hole and predict there should be a very huge mass object at the center. So this is how the uh, three physicists um, discovered the black hole. And last year, um, people use a um, telescope and to see the first image of the black hole, so like a, a donut shape. And the ring, actually, on that black hole, they are the, the stars moving surrounding the black hole. And at the center, um, there's a dark region. That's uh, the, the region where the black hole is. And this is very exciting because um, they take this picture at the center of the galaxy. And people just predict there will be a, there should be a black hole at the center of the galaxy. But they, they don't see, people never see the black hole. So this is the first picture to confirm the black hole at the center of the galaxy. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the Nobel Prize. And uh, I have, yeah, I have an image of black hole and set the ring of the stars and the stars moving around the black hole and make uh, you look the black hole is a very beautiful object. Um, but if you um, go to the black hole, you will find that the gravity is very huge and nothing can escape from the black hole. Okay, so uh, this is uh, what I'm talking about the normal price. The next one will be the quiz. Um, the quiz last week, uh, I, yeah, where's my quiz? Please, please. Here. Please, six. So um, you can find that uh, we have three objects and the increasing electric field, increasing magnetic field, and the constant current. And we are going to determine on the left side and the right side, if there is induced magnetic field, induced electric field, and if there is induced field, what's the direction at each point? So we are going to use Maxwell's equation to determine if there is induced field. So let me write here. If we have the change electric field, change electric field, it will induce magnetic field. And the equation will be um, the magnetic field line integral. This is a line integral and equals the mu non epsilon non, the change of electric flux. electric flux. Okay, so if there, the electric flux change, there will be induced a magnetic field. And the direction um, is the same as the change in direction. This is uh, uh, Ampere's law or Maxwell's equation. So let's see, um, the electric field point out of the page and increasing. So um, if it point out of the page, my thumb um, goes out of the page, and my four fingers uh, curl counterclockwise. So my four finger counter in this way. So at the left point, the direction of the induced magnetic field is going down. And on the left, uh, on the right point, the direction goes up. And this is uh, 
induce a magnetic field. Second one, if there is magnetic field and point out of the page that is increasing in strength, then let's see, we are going to use uh, Maxwell's equation but Friday's law to calculate the electric field. We know the line integral of electric field is equal to minus the change of uh, magnetic flux. And the difference from the Ampere's law is the integral of magnetic field is equal to the mu non epsilon non change of uh, electric flux. On the first equation, there's no negative sign, no minus sign. Oh, hold on. So that means and the direction of induced magnetic field is the same as the direction of the change electric flux. But the, M, uh, the, the Friday's law said there is a negative sign in front of the change of flux. That means the induced electric field is opposed to the um, change of magnetic flux. So let's see. Um, in the second question, if the magnetic field increasing out of the page, then my thumb should go inside of the page, into the page. Then my four fingers curl clockwise. So on the left, goes up, on the right, goes down. This is the electric field. Number three, um, there is a conductor, and inside the conductor, there is a current, and the, the current is a constant over the time, and what's the direction of the inducer field? So if the current is a constant, there's only magnetic field. There's no electric field. So, uh, let's see, according to the um, magnetic field generated by the current, we have this equation, magnetic field uh, magnitude equal to the mu non i 2 pi r. And the direction depends on the right-hand row, right-hand row, and my thumb goes out of the page and my four fingers curl clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. So on the left, it goes down, on the left, it goes up. This is a result of the quiz for the last week. And because my first section didn't take the quiz, so I gave everybody full credit. Um, but you, you need to know how to get the solution. Any other question? Uh, yeah, quick question. Um, yeah. What if you're, it, could you just do one again, but what if like it was decreasing coming out of the page? Like how would that change it? You mean the, the current? Um, like number one, if the electric field was decreasing, it was, if it was still coming out of the page, but decreasing, how would that kind of change things? First one, if it decreased, Let's see. So if it decreases, then my thumb should go into the page because the change, the change of electric field, the direction of change of electric field goes into the page. So if it increases, then the change of the electric field is out of the page. But if it's decreasing, then uh, my thumb should go into the page. If my thumb goes into the page, then my four fingers curl clockwise. 
like this. So this is the induced magnetic field. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to like kind of see how it would affect it. Okay, um, this is a quiz. Let me um, talk about uh, the EM wave. So today, uh, I think the biggest problem will be how do we use Maxwell's equation to explain the electromagnetic uh, waves. So here we have the two equations in the Maxwell's equation. Let me just uh, remind you, Maxwell, equations, they are most too important. The first one is change electric field will induce magnetic field. So the, uh, the equations is, we do the line integral of magnetic field, that will be equal to mu noun, epsilon noun, the change of electric field electric flux. Okay. So if the electric flux change, then the magnetic field induced. The second one is the change magnetic field is going to induce uh, electric field. And the equation will be the line integral of electric field for closed circle equal to the um, change of the magnetic flux and the direction goes opposite. Okay, so if there is an oscillating electric field, oscillating electric field, something like a sine function, sinusoid function. This is the electric field, this is the time, and this is proportional to a sine function. Omega is uh, the frequency. Then according to the uh, Maxwell's equation, the oscillating electric field is going to induce mag oscillating magnetic field. So the generated magnetic field is also like a sine wave. So B is also proportional to the sine function or a cosine function, doesn't matter. And this is just a phase difference. Okay, then the induced magnetic field is going to generate a new electric field. electric field. So the E is going to induce B and the B is going to induce E and goes up. And if this oscillation propagates far away, then we call this propagation as an electromagnetic wave. If the uh, oscillation propagate then this is called electro electromagnetic wave we call this em wave So we, um, you might heard about this uh, terminology, and there are many EM waves, like uh, the, the radio rays, X-rays, the visible light, or um, UV light, or the IR laser. So all of the, uh, the laser, the lights, and the radio um, EM waves uh, within this uh, family. And 
if this wave um, is propagating, the speed of the propagation is a constant. The speed of EM wave is constant. And you need to remember this number. We use a little c to represent the speed of the EM wave. That will be equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. Okay. And this is also equal to 1 over square root epsilon mu nu. So we can do some simple calculation um, to confirm this is equal to the speed of light. And let's see, the epsilon we know is equal to the k and the electric force equal to the kq1 q2 over r square or equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r square so k equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and we know k is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9 and the mu naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. So let's multiply this and we will have epsilon naught equals 4 pi, 1 over 4 pi k. k is 9 times 10 to the 9. And the mu naught is 4 pi times uh, 10 to the negative 7. Then 4 pi just gone. 4 pi cancels. And we have 9 and times 10 to the 16. OK. Then we do the square root, 1 over square root mu naught, epsilon naught. Then we will have 3 times 10 to the 8. Okay, this is a magic, right? Um, because the epsilon naught and the mu naught are derived from the electric field and the magnetic field, and nothing to do with the speed. But eventually, by this calculation, we get a constant speed. This is speed of uh, EM waves. Also, this is speed of light. And Maxwell discovered the relation of speed of light is equal to the speed of the EM waves. So he predicts the light is one of the EM waves. Then let me show you the family of the EM waves. So this is a big family of EM waves. And you can find from the left to the right and depends on the wavelength. So on the left, the wavelength is long, and on the right, the wavelength is small. And you can find the numbers here. And the radio uh, wave has a very long wavelength. Is uh, the uh, the length is ten to third meters, so it's one kilometer or even long. So we use this range of EM wave to do the uh, communication. So um, at the very beginning, people use long wave to do the communication. And, uh, and they find that the long wave cannot um, give um, enough information. So they go to the, uh, uh, the lower or the less free, uh, wavelength and to go to the high frequency. And now we use uh, 4G to do the communication. And actual 4G is at the border between the radio and the microwave. So this is the, the wavelength we use for 4G communication. Okay. And let's see. If the wavelength is long, then the frequency is, uh, is small because we know the wavelength we use lambda to represent the wavelength times the frequency. The frequency we use f represents the frequency. 
the multiplication of these two is constant. That's the speed of light. So speed of light is a constant. The wavelength times the frequency is the speed of light. And if the wavelength is long, then oh, the wavelength is long, then the frequency is small. Okay. And if we go to the microwave region, the microwave is another big family in the EM waves. And people use microwave to heat the water or to heat food. And because the, um, and the, the molecules uh, is oscillating, and the water molecules and other uh, molecules oscillating under the microwave, and the oscillation frequency um, is in the microwave, the frequency. So if the water resonates um, with the uh, microwave, then the water um, will raise the temperature and you get the food heat. So this is a microwave. And then we go to infrared, the IR. The IR is, um, is shorter than the microwave. And the wavelength is around micron size, micron uh, meter. And we use IR laser to do the visualization. And something you cannot see, but the IR can see. So the people generate the IR um, frequency EM waves and because the temperature of the human's skin is uh, 90 to 100 Fahrenheit. And at this temperature, people has going to um, radiate the microwave um, or the infrared um, EM waves. So at that temperature, people generate the IR uh, EM wave and we can use detector uh, to probe if there's uh, uh, the people. So this will be used in the military and at the, uh, at the night, if you cannot see if there's animal or the, uh, the people, and we can use uh, the IR um, glass to detect if there's uh, people around you. Then when the uh, EM wave go to the shorter, we go to visible range. Visible range is a small range in the EM uh, spectrum. And from the long wavelength to the low wavelength, and we have uh, the, the red, then yellow, then green, then blue, then go to the dark blue. Um, you can see the, the purple, the violet, has the shortest wavelength. So in that case, if we go to the much shorter, then our eye cannot, uh, the human's eyes cannot detect the wavelength shorter than the, the purple. And if we go to beyond the, this region, we go to ultraviolet. The well, ultraviolet is a, um, a good EM wave to uh, cure the disease. And we use the UV uh, to cure the, the virus or the bacteria. Um, so this is a good, useful uh, EM wave. And if the wavelength goes shorter, and we go to X-ray, the X-ray is a um, it's a tour to image uh, the human's bone or the human's body and the penetration is very strong for the x-ray. And we have the gamma ray. This is the shortest wavelength but a very high frequency. If we go to gamma ray, the gamma ray is going to damage the human's body. So we have to avoid the gamma ray. And this gamma ray will be generated by the nuclear reaction. So if there is any nuclear reaction, we need to build a very thick wall to block the gamma ray. Okay, and this is the EM waves family. And we go back to see how does EM wave propagate in the space. This is um, uh, animation of the EM waves. And you can find that um, the EM wave it's propagating along the x direction. So the speed right here, um, the speed, oh, the speed of the uh, EM waves go to the x direction. And the electric field is 
um, parallel to the y direction. It's oscillating in the y direction and the uh, magnetic field is oscillating in the z direction. So you can conclude in this way the electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay? And the speed of the EM wave is perpendicular to the surface made by the E and B. So C is perpendicular to the E, and C is also perpendicular to the B. So along the X, Y, Z direction, it will be the speed, the electric field, and the magnetic field. So we can use the right-hand row to determine the, uh, the direction of the three vector. So we use E, B, C. So if X, Y, and Z. X is E, then Y is B, Z is C. If we change, rotate the, the direction, that will be E go to the Y, B go to the Z, then C go to the X. So if we use right-hand row, so we curl our, our hand from B to E, my thumb go to the C. So um, this is how we de uh, determine the direction of the EM wave. And the, we know the speed of the uh, EM wave is three times 10 to the eight meter per second. And you can get this number by doing the ratio of electric field over the magnetic field. I could confirm this to you. And go to the my notes. So um, we have this relation that's the C, another color, the speed of the EM wave equal to 310 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. And this is also equal to 1 over square root epsilon long mu naught. And then you can find this relation by doing the ratio of E to the B. So the electric field over the magnetic field by the strength is equal to the speed of the light. So this is also a very important formula. The E over B is equal to the speed of light. So if we have uh, electric fields oscillate in this way, and magnetic fields oscillate in this way, and the speed of light goes in this way. So we use E curl B to the C, we will have uh, oscillating uh, of the EM wave travel in the, in the direction of the speed. And we have the E over B equal to C. And this is also equal to one over epsilon non mu naught. Okay, this is a very useful conclusion. And we can do some practice to understand how that is useful. Let me go to mastering physics. And the mastering physics, um, this one. You yesterday. I have number number two. So we're going to determine the direction of the EM wave. Uh, which direction is traveling direction? We have the E go to the X direction. We have the E go to the X direction. We have B go to Y direction. So the, the speed should go to the Z direction. We have X, Y, Z. So if this is not the correct order, we can see y, z, uh, x, or z, x, y. So this is uh, the order how we write the, the relation. And let's see, the e go to the x, b go to the y, so the c goes to the z. So the c will goes out of the page.
page. Next one, the E go to X and the B goes to negative Z. This is X, Y, Z. And the B goes into the page. So B goes negative Z, X go to, uh, the E go to X. Then in this case, let's say we use right hand, I curl my forefinger from E to the B. So my fingers goes uh, counterclockwise, my thumb goes up. So the C goes to the Y, positive Y. So the direction goes up. Do you have other question? Then let me move to the next question. Um, here, the intensity. Let's talk about the intensity. The intensity actually uh, is proportional to the energy. This is proportional to the energy. If the energy of the electric field is uh, is large, then the intensity is large. And the intensity and the energy has a relation with the electric field also and the magnetic field. That will be the square of the electric field or square of magnetic field. And if you go to the course side and check the equation, you will find that the energy density, the energy density we use W to represent this is energy density. This will be equal to the one half of epsilon non electric field square. This is uh, energy density for electric field. And the same thing, the density, energy density for magnetic field is equal to one half B squared over mu naught. And you can find that uh, the energy density of electric field actually is equal to the energy density of magnetic field. I confirm this uh, to you. So we know the E over B, the ratio of electric field and the magnetic field is equal to the speed of light. And this is equal to one over square root epsilon non mu non. And let's do the square on both sides. We'll have E square, B square equal to epsilon non mu non. Okay, so I multiply epsilon non on the left, then the epsilon non just cancels. And I multiply B square on the right, so the B square just gone. So we have epsilon non e square equal to the b square over mu naught. So we confirm the energy density of the electric field is equivalent to the energy density of magnetic field. Okay, so if this is true, um, we will get, uh, if we know the energy density of the electric field, the total energy density is equal to twice of electric field energy density. So the total will be equal to the energy density of electric field plus energy density of magnetic field. That will be equivalent to epsilon non E square or B square over mu naught, which is times two, right? Then let me go back to this question. Um, it says if the amplitude of electric field double, then how does uh, uh, the, the intensity of the EM wave change? So if the electric field doubled, then the energy density is going to uh, be the, the fourth of the original intensity, uh, intensity. So E times two, the E square will times four. So we have intensity times four. So we have the um, 
the double the uh, we have double the electric field, but we have the quadruple of the intensity. Next question. Um, if the magnitude of the magnetic field doubled, the same thing we have intensity proportional to the energy density and energy density is equal to uh, magnetic field square over mu now, the total energy density, the total. Okay. Then if B doubled, the, in, the intensity it will go to four times of original. Next one, if both electric fields and the magnetic field doubled, so this is a trick um, because when electric field doubled, the magnetic field will double. Oh. Here, if the electric field doubled, the magnetic field will double. So when you double electric field, the magnetic field double, then we have four times. So it doesn't matter um, which you have E double and the B doesn't double. If it's doubled, everything is doubled. So next one. And what will the intensity will be if the frequency is doubled? The frequency um, has nothing to do with the intensity. So if it's doubled, it doesn't change the intensity. Okay. And we have a couple of minutes. I'm going to the number nine. The number nine is um, how we determine the energy density. So here we have energy density and the electric field go to the direction of J and the magnetic field go to the uh, direction of K. So if I have I, J, K, so this is E, this is B, so C go to the right. And let's see, what's the uh, instantaneous energy tens uh, density in the electric field of the wave? So it only asks you to calculate the electric field energy density. So we should have one half. So the energy density will be one half epsilon noun E squared. So we have E equal to E noun sine kx minus omega t, right? So the e square will be one half epsilon noun, e noun square sine square. Okay, this is a result. Part B, what's the energy density for the magnetic field. So we use the same equation. Um, U, the energy density is equal to the one half B square mu naught. Okay, so we uh, just square the magnetic fields, then we have this relation. Part C, what's the average energy density? Okay, it's so the average density. Just now we have the energy density for the electric field that's one half E noun square epsilon noun and we have sine kx minus omega t square. We want to do the average because the sine function is a periodic uh, function. If I draw this, we have sine square that will be equal to like this. This is a sine square function. And if we want to do the average, we just need to do in the one period. So we pick one period, so we do um, the integral of this function as a t from zero to the period over the period. This is average of the function. And the magnitude, if we do the average, is the same thing. So we do the average for the sine function, 
and you can find that the sine square actually could be written as one minus um, cosine two times kx minus omega t over two. And let me see. You will also find that if we do the integral in the one period, you will get this guy, the integral is equal to zero because this is within one period. The, in, within a one period, the integral of cosine function is zero. So we only have the uh, integral of one, one over two. So that will be equal to one over two times t, the period. And here we have the divide by t, so this is equal to the one over two. So the average of the sine function is equal to the one over two. So we have the one over four epsilon nouns. So this is energy density. So you just need to remember that if we do the average of sine function, it will be equal to one over two. Part D, and what's the average energy density in the magnetic field of the wave? The same thing, we have energy density for the magnitude is one over two B squared over mu naung. This is the magnitude of the energy density for the magnetic field. And if we want to do the average, so we do the average of sine function, sine square function, then this is equal to one over two. So this is one over four B squared over mu naung. Do you have a question? Then let's see. Um, derive the expression of average energy density and in the whole wave, okay? And we know the energy density for the electric field is one over four epsilon non E square and E non square, okay? We should plus the one over four B square over mu naung. So this is a total energy density, total average energy density. And we know this guy is equal to epsilon naung E square. They just separate the EM waves energy density equally. So we can write this as one half epsilon naung E naung square or one over two B square over mu naung. The last one, the point vector, and he defined the point vector by E cross B over mu naung, and calculates the time average pointing vector. Okay, so we know the E is perpendicular to the B. So the E cross B could be written as E times B. And let's see, E times B, the B actually is another sine function, right? So we have E non sine function times B non sine function over mu non. And if we do the average, we have sine function square, right? So the average will be E non mu non by e naung b naung over mu naung, then the sine function to the average is one over two. Okay, and um, I think this is the result. If you don't want b naung, and we are going to change the b naung as e naung over c, because we know the ratio of e to the b is c. So we change this as e naung square over 2c mu naung. Okay, and if we don't want mu naung, we have this relation, c 
or uh, mu non epsilon non over one is equal to c square. So we replace it. one over mu non, and that will be the c square epsilon non. So the c goes away. We have one half e non square c epsilon non. So this is uh, the result. So I, I want to stop here. And so today we talk about the EM waves and talk about speed of light and also the, uh, the energy density of the EM waves. I think we need to do more practice and uh, um, we'll give, you will understand how the EM waves are propagating in the space. Okay, so I stop here. Do you have other?